hello everybody and welcome back to T-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And uh, it's a dog day afternoon. Everybody's been laying in the shade all day trying to keep cool. I made sure they had plenty of cold water and I had this ground wet down a few times for them. But uh, it keeps drying things out and also I had to get out to the garden again today and put some more water on there. I'm down to my last tote full of water for the garden. Well, it's actually, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, it's four-fifths full still. I used a fifth of it today. But uh, everything in there was looking bad. I mean, my tomato plants, the poor things, they just, like, between uh, yesterday morning and today, they were just dried and wilted, and everything was just dried in it because the, the winds are blowing. The humidity is down to like eight or nine percent, and uh, the temperatures are up in the hundreds, say 110, 112, 114. Just drying things out. All right, so I really don't have that much today because. Uh, um, like I said, I've just been running around trying to uh, keep things alive out here. Uh, the chickens got water. They got water in their wading pool. They got fed. The dogs all got fed. They got plenty of water. So that's that part's taken care of. But I've got one thing that I have to take care of today. Uh, all about the shunt. The shunt. I've been taking some flack about my video on the shunt. All right, there's the shunt, and it's installed right there. It's a 1,000 amp shunt. And the flack I've been taking is, I didn't need one that big. So let me explain here, because <clears throat> I already explained it to the person that's uh, giving me the flack on it. I did not think I needed one this big. I contacted lead time on the batteries. And they said, are your batteries in series or parallel? I said, I have four of them in parallel for a 12 volt system. And they said, no, you cannot use a 500 amp shunt. You have to get one that's over a thousand because you've got 920 amp hours in those batteries while they're tied together. I said, but I don't understand it. I took a um, an amp reading with my clamp on amp probe and it, it said that I was only drawing maybe four or five hundred um, amps maximum uh, with everything turned on and they said well that that says that you can use a 500 but um, you better go with the 1000 because it may damage the batteries and at that point I said okay that's all I need to know uh, basically what they were telling me was they wanted the get out of warrantying my batteries if there was a problem with the batteries because of an item I connected that was not adequate to handle the total amps that were coming out of them. And I, I told them that I only had a 4,000 watt inverter. And if you use Ohm's law and you take 4,000 watts and divide it by the voltage, which is 12 volts, That'll tell you the, the number of amps that this thing will draw for a max. So I said, I don't, really, I don't really see how I need that. And they said, no, you have to go with the larger one. And they said, we don't sell one larger than a 500. So since you're in parallel, you're going to have to buy one from somebody else. So that's why I went to Victron. And I bought the Victron. Now... I've taken uh, uh, some flack, especially from one individual, but I also had a few other people say, 
I didn't need anything this large. Again, the only reason I went this large was because I had already been on the phone with the battery manufacturer and if I would had something happen to the batteries, they would come back and say, no, we told you, you needed a larger shunt. And they're not going to warranty my batteries, so unless somebody wants to give me a better warranty than the battery company, I'm going to go with what the battery company said, right? Even though I myself don't believe I have to. But I did. It's set up. It's working. I don't have to worry about it. It's, it'll handle the number of um, amps I want to put through it. And it also comes through with these extra bolts on, the, on here. So if I need to hook up something else to this unit, I can hook it up right there without having to tear the whole thing apart. All right? So there are some advantages to having this. And it's a Bluetooth unit, so I'm monitoring it on my cell phone. And I will put a, um, a, a still shot of my settings page and my running page right about here somewhere between 6.45 and um, 7 minutes in. I'll try to get those things posted in here. So in the meantime, I still haven't been able to get my classic to go online so I can up, update the firmware on it and get it in the internet so I can monitor it from inside. But uh, I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to worry about it because bottom line is this is all going to come out um, if I ever get, if and when I ever get. I'm going to say when because I want to have a little positive attitude. When I get my inheritance, I'm going to be taking these things out of here and they will be going for, um, right on the wall here will be an all-in-one. And this inverter will come out of here. It won't need to be here anymore. Now, I haven't decided whether I want to put this inverter in my van system uh, because I will have a system in my van with life bubble in there also and uh, having a nice big unit like this with the 4,000 um, watts because the, uh, the one I have in there is a 2 to 4, two to four which is basically saying a 3,000 watt but uh, because it's Chinese I would say 2,000 watt and I could put this in there and um, up my power uh, capabilities in the van really well. And then I can add one more 100 watt panel on the roof. Yeah, I have room for it. And then uh, I'll be putting 300 watts in. And I have a LiPo uh, for 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. And uh, I'll be able to stick a small fridge in there if I wanted. How do you think about that? I think that's pretty cool, huh? So maybe I will be doing that. Um, the Rover, uh, I'm not sure. I may uh, put that in the van also and use that as my uh, inverter because that will handle Life Pro 4. This uh, um, controller, I, I said inverter, controller. This controller, my Midnight, um, will end up being a controller for uh, my wind power because I'm going to take down my um, 12 volt turbine or PMA and I'll be putting up a 48 volt PMA. Now, one more thing. I was accused of being adamant about 12 volt systems and not wanting to change the 48 volt and all that stuff. Listen, when I started I started out setting everything up for 12 volt. To change the 48 volt system, the only reason that I didn't want to do it back then was, first of all, well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, Life Pro 4 batteries were not in the best interest at that time. Okay, I don't even think they had Life Pro 4, they had uh, lithium ion. So I didn't go that way. 
even with a 12 volt system. I went with the golf cart batteries because at the time these things were rated highly for a um, off-grid system because they had a lot of uh, staying power. And I guess they were right because I got 10 years out of them, right? So, I wasn't arguing the fact about 12 volt, 48 volt, 24 volt, or anything like that being better or worse or anything like that. All I was saying is what I had was working and I don't fix what is working. I only fix things that are broken. All right? So, that being said, I'm going to close this off. And if you want to know who's been um, making those comments, um, go back to the video about uh, adding a new item to my LIFO Force. And you can look through the comments and see who's there and see if uh, you agree with the person. And if not, hey, you have a right to respond to those comments also. So, thanks for joining me, everybody. This is G Bear saying, hey, I just dropped from 13.3 down to 13.2. And my batteries are still at 99% because 13.3 is what I've got them set at for full charge. <laughs> and we're going into the night. Yeah, I just, uh, I ran this yesterday because it hasn't been started for a while. And gasoline does not st um, store well anymore, even though I have stable um, in the fuel just for that. But uh, let's see where I'm at here. Uh, looks like I'm about three quarters of a tank still full. But uh, I need to run it every now and then. And then tomorrow, I left the, the cage up. Because tomorrow I'm going to come out here and clean it all off and change the oil and clean the air filters because those are all maintenance jobs that you have to do on your generators to make them last long. This thing still fires up with a single pull. And I mean, it's not even a hard pull. It's just a soft um, pull it up, just steady and slow, and it kicks right over. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. This is G-Bear signing off.